Pay the federal minimum wage. The minimum wage. The national minimum wage. The minimum wage. The minimum wage is one of the most highly debated but important topics going on in the United States right now. That is why we ask you, Mr. Trump, to please take a stance on the topic for the nation. But what is the minimum wage? For that, we have to go back to 1938 during the Great Depression. President Franklin Roosevelt introduced the wage at just 25 cents an hour. 25 cents an hour equivalents to about $11 if you adjust for inflation in 2016. Since then, Congress has increased the minimum wage 22 times, the most recent time being in 2009. Now, 29 states have a minimum wage higher than that of the federal minimum. The U.S. federal minimum wage is $7.25 an hour, but minimum wage varies from state to state. In Missouri, the minimum wage is $7.65 an hour. Let's say these pennies represent all the workers in the United States. These are the ones making minimum wage or less. 3.3%. That's 2.6 million Americans. So what's all the debate about? Well, the debate comes from the fact that most people see 7.25 an hour not fit to provide the necessities of life. Two, if you stop and think about it, I tell people, you have uh, $10 an hour is not minimum wage, obviously, but $10 an hour is $400 a week. $400 a week times 50 weeks is $20,000 a month, right? Mm -hmm. So can people live on $20,000? Probably not. Not for one person. And again, it depends on, like I said, the situation. Are you trying to raise two children? Or are you uh, in high school trying to make some extra money for things that you want? In fact, if you were to work 40 hours a week earning minimum wage, you would still fall below the federal poverty line if you are raising a child. With 2.6 million Americans earning the minimum wage, that makes this topic very important for the well-being of our nation. Many organizations have been pushing for a higher minimum wage. One organization, the Fight for 15, is pushing for the federal minimum wage to hit $15, double that of what it is right now. They're stringing together 40-hour weeks whenever they can, and in many cases, they're not given the opportunity to even do that. But they're being paid wages that cobble together to just over $15,000 a year. Even when McDonald's raises wages for the fraction of its workers behind the counters of their corporate stores, they'll only get a raise of $5,000. And $5,000 will make a huge difference for those families. But at $20,000, they've gone from drowning to just barely keeping their heads above water. That is not enough to pay for a college education or to buy a home. That's not enough to save for retirement. That's not enough to pay for medical bills. Madam Speaker, that's not enough to achieve the American dream. My Progressive Caucus colleagues and I are here on the floor tonight to stand with workers in the fight for 15. That's $15 an hour and the right to form unions. It's time to support working families and it is time to make it possible to work hard and get ahead. Other attempts to increase the minimum wage include Obama's proposal, which would increase the minimum wage to $10.10. And, .10. and as a chief executive, I intend to lead by example. Profitable corporations like Costco see higher wages as the smart way to boost productivity and reduce turnover. We should too. In the coming weeks, I will issue an executive order requiring federal contractors to pay their federally funded employees a fair wage of at least $10.10 an hour because if you cook our troops meals or wash their dishes, you should not have to live in poverty. 74% of American workers say this support a higher minimum wage. Many experts say an increase in the minimum wage would boost the economy. I do think that what's going to happen is that the number of jobs that are going to be created in the economy will, will cause competition for labor. And competition for labor always drives up employment opportunities and, and wages. So whether he achieves $10 an hour through legislation, which I, I doubt, or through uh, a vibrant economy, which is more likely, um, you know, we'll see. The poverty level would decrease, allowing 900,000 people to rise above the threshold. Real income below the poverty line would increase by $5 billion. So, say the minimum wage was raised. 
What kind of consequences can the nation expect to see? Well, for starters, there would be less available jobs and prices would have to increase to meet this new standard. Yeah, the, the product or services that they provide have to be priced at a much higher price point. And then the public, the consumers, get to choose whether they're going to spend you know, significantly more for a hamburger or, or a car wash or whatever. As you can see, if you have a certain amount of money to pay to employees, paying each employee more means you have less money to pay out to other employees, meaning you would have to lay somebody off or increase prices. To but even Obama's $10.10 plan will cost the nation 500,000 jobs, according to a Congressional Office budget study. In the same study, it suggested that the $15 hour minimum wage would cause a loss of 6.6 .6 million jobs. Other opposition comes from the fact that many people believe that you should not and will not support a family on the minimum wage. And when you look at the total labor force, uh, the people who are making minimum wage for the most part are young folks starting out in the labor force and they, they may be living at home or they may be have roommates, maybe cost sharing. Point is, there are very, very, very few people who are trying to raise a family on seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. According to a recent study, twenty-six percent of small businesses say that they would have to cut back on employees if the minimum wage were to be increased. In the same study, thirty-two percent of businesses say that they would have to raise their prices to account for this new minimum wage. So, in conclusion. The minimum wage is a pressing topic that demands action more and more each day. Thank you.